Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Lact Fact Weekly Podcast, which highlights recent clinically relevant research, policy statements, and protocols that you, as a practicing lactation professional, would probably like to know about. I'm your host, Dr. Ann Eglash. I'm a board certified family physician and breastfeeding and lactation medicine specialist at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. This podcast is written and produced by the nonprofit organization IABLE, which is the Institute for the Advancement of Breastfeeding and Lactation Education. We have no commercial funders for this podcast series. Today's lact fact comes from the article, Does Antenatal Expressing Affect Onset of Lactogenesis for Women with Diabetes? Results from a Randomized Controlled Trial and Cohort Study. The first author is Anita Moorhead at the One Judith Lumley Center School of Nursing and Midwifery at La Trobe University, which is in Melbourne, Victoria, in Australia. And this was published in the Australian and New Zealand Journal of OBGYN and accepted for publication on December 15, 2024. So just as a background, antenatal claustrum expression has become a pretty popular practice in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, UK, and probably many other places. The practice is not new. It involves expressing claustrum during pregnancy, which may be leaking anyway, in case the infant needs supplementation in the first days of life. For example, newborns might need supplementation for low blood sugars related to gestational diabetes or being small for gestational age. And we know that there are a lot of infant risk factors that trigger newborn blood sugar screening, which unfortunately tends to increase the likelihood of early supplementation. Some educational resources have claimed that expressing colostrum during pregnancy is associated with faster secretory activation. And I just wanna point out that in this lacked fact, I'm using the term secretory activation for quote unquote, the milk coming in, or the older term, lactogenesis 2. The researchers in today's study evaluated whether it's true that expressing colostrum during pregnancy is really going to bring on secretory activation earlier, and this is something that many websites have have discussed, and the question is whether or not there's any validity to this. So they compared three groups of women. They started with participants from the DAME study. This was a previously published study that was a randomized controlled trial of women who had diabetes during their pregnancy, where 319 women expressed colostrum during pregnancy, and the other group of 315 women did not. That study looked at whether providing the colostrum early postpartum decreased newborn admission to the NICU for for low blood sugars, which it didn't. However, the study showed that expressing colostrum starting at 36 weeks of pregnancy is safe. In addition to those two groups of women with diabetes during pregnancy, this study recruited another 210 women who didn't have diabetes who were not advised to express colostrum antenatally. This allowed them to compare the timing of secretory activation between, between women with diabetes and without diabetes, and it was only half the women with diabetes who did colostrum expression during pregnancy. They measured the onset of secretory activation by asking the participants when they noticed that their breasts were feeling fuller, and they tried to get this nailed down to the hour as close as possible. And they defined a delay in that onset of secretory activation as noticeable fullness that didn't happen until after 72 hours postpartum. So in the results, they found that 58% of the women with diabetes who did antenatal colostrum expression had a delay in secretory activation compared with 56% of those who had diabetes who did not do antenatal colostrum expression. So basically, there was no difference in the timing of secretory activation, whether they expressed colostrum during pregnancy or not. Many fewer of the women who didn't have diabetes all of whom did not do antenatal colostrum expression had delay in secretory activation. And the reason for this is likely because the women without diabetes were much less likely to have a BMI over 30 as compared to the women with diabetes. This makes sense because several studies have shown that elevated BMI is associated with a delay in secretory activation. So the bottom line is that this study shows that secretory activation occurs later in women with diabetes, higher BMI, and antenatal colostrum expression had no impact on secretory activation. So I just want to 
give you my personal comments, which are that I am not surprised that expressing colostrum during pregnancy does not hasten secretory activation. Basic physiology is that the drop in progesterone postpartum, along with keeping the prolactin up through frequent suckling, is key to orchestrating the process of secretory activation. This involves the fences between the milk-producing cells, called tight junctions, to close in order to start collecting milk in the alveoli. Antenatal expression can be exciting for some people because they can collect a fair amount of colostrum and become quite skilled at hand expression, but others see this as another chore, and many women can't express much colostrum. There's evidence that some women become discouraged when they can't, clust- when they can't collect colostrum um, because they worry that they're not going to be able to have enough milk when they breastfeed. So far, we have not proven advantages to antenatal expression other than evidence that the practice leads to greater comfort with hand expression. It behooves us as healthcare providers to have an evidence-based discussion with our patients about what the real advantages are so that they can make their informed decisions on whether or not to do this. And the bottom line is that antenatal colostrum expression will not bring in the milk faster, at least according to the study. I want to extend a huge thank you to the authors for publishing this very important study. Touche and well done. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. I encourage you to check out IABLE at lacted.org, which is L-A-C-T-E-D.org, to learn more about our educational projects, courses, educational handouts, videos, live conferences, and webinars. By becoming a member, you are not only supporting our free projects, but you will also receive a series of benefits which you can learn about at our website. I'll be back with another LAC fact in a few weeks.